Ready? Sam Sloan, ready. All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, Dr. Sinnott, John Sinnott is our chair. He was unable to be here today, but he wanted me to extend his welcome to all of you all here for the University of South Florida Department of Internal Medicine. Uh, Dr. Sinnott, uh, who I call Dr. Tress Equis, if you're like, what's Tress Equis? Well, Dos Equis, right, the stay thirsty guy. You know, stay thirsty, my friends, the most interesting man in the world. Dr. John Sinnott's even more interesting than that. So, so he, I call him Dr. Tress Equis. Uh, so Dr. Sinnott took over in 2012. He was the third chair of the Department of Internal Medicine, third in the, and then about the 39th year of the department, 38th year department, and has maintained uh, here as the only chair since then. Uh, the three chairs are founding chair Roy Benke, followed by Dr. Alan Goldman, who's still involved in teaching residents and doing clinic for general internal medicine. Uh, so each did about 20 years, and then Dr. Sinnott is in the eighth year of his 20-year uh, contract, so which he'll kill me. I always joke if he hears he has to be here another 20 years, but we won't let him go before then. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be named Senior Vice Chair uh, by Dr. Sinnott and have helped him build this department along with Asa Oxner, who is our newest Vice Chair and really has done an amazing job at bringing clinical care and looking at visions in departments and working with division directors. So Asa Oxner, who you will see later today, she's on wards. Uh, and then Dr. Jeffrey Krischer is our other vice chair, and Dr. Krischer has the highest NIH dollar amount of any researcher in this country, and has led USF to a total amount of NIH funding of 81 million, which is more than the entire state medical centers combined. Uh, they don't even reach to the level of USF's 81 million. So that sets the tone for discussion of research, and we have hired outstanding researchers to come join us. We didn't sit back, and that's the one thing that's great about USF, is continual improvement, process improvement in everything. In research, that meant Dr. Sinnott getting out and recruiting uh, several of the top names in what we call vectors of medicine. So, and creating a vector center of excellence. So the highlight of which was bringing Charles Brachot, who was the director of the Pasteur Institute, the person who uh, discovered the mechanism of hepatocellular carcinoma and how it occurred through hepatitis B and hepatitis C, is now a researcher in the department of the University of South Florida, Department of Internal Medicine. And uh, amongst the many things Dr. Brachot is working on is something Dr. Sinnott wanted me to talk about, which is the gut microbiome. You always hear about genetics and environment, and you always wonder, what is that environment? Well, the environment is starting more and more to look like that it might be the microbiome that is our gut. And when, that might be where the rubber meets the road as to why folks who are twins or heavy, heavy concordance, brother, sister, why some have similar disposition of disease, yet some get the disease and some don't. And guess who gave the grand rounds on that this year? Our own Dr. John Sinnott, which was an outstanding talk. Um, the other thing Dr. Sinnott's really excited about, which hits on research, and, and then I'm gonna get into patient care, is he's starting an international fellowship. So Dr. Sinnott uh, was the Associate Dean for International Studies and still plays a major role in that. He was also Division Director of ID before he became Chair. And so we offer experiences which are now gonna be even more formalized through this fellowship in China, Nicaragua, Panama, and this is amongst other countries that I haven't mentioned, uh, India. And we, are, we have led the way in international uh, response with Andrew Myers and Dr. Oxner being at the forefront in Sierra Leone and Western Africa during the Ebola crisis. So we had USF right there during the Ebola crisis. And then again, USF was a leading institution that went to the Bahamas during Hurricane Dorian and provided relief for the victims uh, there. And so there's videos on our website where you can see the Bahamas relief efforts and see a lot of other great stories about our international mission. Patient care. So in patient care, Tampa General Hospital, uh, the Department of Internal Medicine is a big reason why we are ranked top five in the US News and World Report in five, in, in ranked in the top 50 in five specialties. Uh, 
and we are considered the second top hospital in the state of Florida, top in the West Coast, uh, for patient care. And that's magnified by all the experiences that you have here at Tampa General with an outstanding hospitalist group, outstanding specialists, spilling over to some clinics in the STC Center, which is the building right in front of Tampa General here. Uh, as we move forward, Moffitt, the only National Cancer Institute in the state of Florida, one of the few in the Southeast, top research institution. You, you, you almost, you know, you walk into the building, you trip over somebody and research papers land on you. So you say, hey, maybe I'm interested in this. So there's lots of opportunities for you over at the Moffitt Cancer Center, the VA hospital where I'm primarily located out of, and I am the chief of medicine at the VA hospital. Uh, we are a top 10, uh, and we have rankings. We are a top 10 VA in the 154 ranked VA hospital system, which is very hard to do for a hospital of our size and our complexity because of all the things that we are ranked on. And the residents play an active part in learning these metrics and helping us to do very well in these metrics, which is all part of your journey as what I like to call book medicine and street medicine. Book medicine is Cushing's disease, endocrinopathies, infectious disease presentations, and solving them like we had last Friday and we'll have shortly. Street medicine is learning how you handle yourself in a culture where you're always gonna have metrics being thrown at you. You're always gonna have quality improvement projects thrown at you. How do you learn that? Well, you have to pick a program that tells you that that's gonna be part of its education of you as a resident, and that's exactly what we do here at USF. Uh, Education-wise, our board pass rate, Dr. Aller already mentioned, but it bears repeating with this fact. Last year, for at any program having at least 40 residents, we were in the top 13 in the country for any program with at least 40 residents with our board pass rate. That is an incredible statement. Just think of how many places. There's, there's 13 in a street in New York, you know, <laughs> to put it in perspective. So uh, that's how much we care about the book medicine part that we are teaching you and the passion that we have, that we are gonna have you pass your boards and how we're gonna work with you during fellowship and that's part of the education as well. How we build your resume, scholarly activity, and uh, how we build your research, uh, all that plays a part of what we do here at USF. Uh, community involvement, Tampa Bay Street Medicine, we have the Bridge Clinic. Uh, every one of us is involved in some sort of community involvement. Myself, for 15 years, while well, Kathy Karuba was still here running Hillsborough County Emergency Management, I served as her backup, as her deputy director lights are going out so I like that so they're back on here it's Y2K so to freedom uh, lead you to freedom Y2K all over again but for 15 years that's what I did for my community involvement uh, she always tried to get me a stipend I said I don't want a stipend this is what community involvement's about it's my free time I got to teach my residents about this and I got several residents involved in a lot of emergency management projects through the years including when we did Operation Haiti Relief uh, back in 2011. Uh, we brought Haitian victims here to Tampa and put them in area hospitals and then put them in local, uh, local um, uh, apartments for housing, many of them who remain in the Tampa Bay area and many of them who are working and very productive uh, naturalized citizens of the United States here in the Tampa Bay area. Um, so I'll leave with this as far as why I came here. So I was sitting where you're at uh, about 22 years ago, 23 years ago. And I was at the University of Florida. I was a senior interviewing at multiple places and came to Tampa uh, because this was my hometown. Many of you heard, I'm a Tampa Jesuit graduate, proud Tampa Jesuit graduate, so is Jonathan, so is Sam. Uh, and so I said, what the heck? I'll take a look at the program, but I had all these other places that I was told I had to look at and that I had to really consider strongly. And I still, I'm a rat pack, I keep a lot of stuff. Although articles, I usually rip out of journals, otherwise my wife would kick me out of the house. So, um, and I wrote the following. I wrote, family atmosphere, innovative cutting edge uh, care, open to feedback to make program changes, interested in developing residents into future academic faculty and academic leaders and faculty stability. That's exactly from my notes November 17th, 1996. Well, I can tell you, nothing has changed 
in the years. And as we go back and we look at what are the most successful programs and businesses out there, those are the ones that stick by their motto and build on their foundation and their footprint. And I'm telling you, that's what you have here in the USF Department of Internal Medicine. You really would be fools to not buy into this uh, especially with all my energy. Um, and so we'll delete that part. The doctor's gonna be like, no fools. So that'll be, they'll be like some sort of like, I'll talk and the mouth won't be there. But I get, I get really excited when it comes to why I love this program. And I've had opportunities to leave over the years. Uh, I was telling somebody earlier, uh, you know, uh, my condolences, somebody told me, I am the longest running chief of medicine in the country, in the VA at 14 years. I'm also the youngest still to have that. But I think that's what USF leadership is all about. It put me in a position to be able to take over at age 33 a very complicated service, how to integrate it with USF internal medicine, because we are one program. You'll never find another program that's tighter despite the distances. I always say the heart, uh, you know, distance makes the heart grow fonder. Uh, and I think that's definitely the case here where other programs, you have buildings right next to each other and they might as well be states apart because the different institutions are not on the same page. We are all on the same page here. We're all here to keep making this program better. That's why I've stayed here all these years is I just love watching something great become great. And so we'd be honored if you decide that you wanna join us for that journey with us. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for giving me the time to talk to you guys. All right, let's bring on the cases.